yard to feed my lambs family We are a family Our hearts are bound together in love We are a family oh, oh, oh. Heart to heart, face to face We are a family Savior Jesus Christ. Today, my sermon is entitled, Who are you going with? Reading from a text, a text from Judges chapter 4, verse 8. Barak said to him, If you go with me, I'll go. But if you do not go with me, I will not go. Okay, in this text, there is Barak. Barak is a war trained soldier. A soldier who knew how to use all weapons well. He knew how to use the bow and arrow. He knew how to use the spears. But Barak in this verse is saying, Deborah, if you do not go with me, I'm not going. Now let's look at uh, Judges chapter 4 verse 1. In Judges chapter 4 verse 1, the Bible is saying, after a who died, the people of Israel started sinning against God. After sinning against God, God sold them to Jabin, the king of Canaan, who had a command, an army commander who answers to the name Sisera. Sisera was an army commander who possessed Jabin's 900 iron chariots. So the Bible is here said Israel was afraid of Canaan because they owned 900 iron chariots and also because of Sisera. So what is happening here? Israel is crying to God. After Israel is crying to God, they are saying, what shall we do? Then they come into the picture. A prophetess wants us to the name Deborah. Deborah was the prophetess who used to sit under a palm tree which answered to the name, the palm of Deborah. And Deborah used to judge the people of Israel at that time. So Deborah, one of the days he called, he said, call to me Barak. 
After calling Barak, he gave Barak the assurance from God that Barak, you should go and fight Sisera. God is saying, God is putting Sisera into your hands. Barak, with that assurance, Barak is saying, no. Deborah alone, I will not go, but with you, I will. But on the other side, I just get that Sisera was saying to Jabin, Jabin, even if you do not come, but with those 900 iron chariots, I will go. In the battlefield, the two people meet, meeting the army commander Barak with Deborah, and the other army commander Sisera was with the 900 iron chariots. Let me tell you, why are you going to war? To war, when Sisera was going to war with the 900 iron chariots, Barak was going to war with Deborah. Today, many of you, are just getting out of their houses, taking their children into their Toyota Hilux, into their BMW, into their golfs, but they're forgetting God. A story is told. A mother had a daughter. So the daughter was not planning a party after graduation. So after graduation, her friends came to their house to pick her up. When they arrived, they took a crate of eggs and they put it in the boots. Then the friends sat in the car. So did the girl. The mother said, my daughter, why don't you carry God with you? Then the daughter said, there is no longer space for God. Maybe in the boots. Then, the then the mother said, I will pray. Then God will be in the boots. So the mother prayed. After the mother prayed, they all said goodbye. Going, a terrible accident took place. After taking place, those who inspected the accident, they saw that all the people died, but in the boot, there, is no, there was no crack on any of the eggs. Because God had traveled on the boot. Today we are just going to school with enough stationery intact, but we are leaving God behind. It would be better to go with a public transport than to take your private car to work without God. With this I say, Amen. Hello everyone, my name is Michael Jacobs. My topic today says Jesus loves children. From Mark 10 verse 13. Long time ago, people of Jerusalem heard that Jesus was in town. They went looking for him. They brought their children with them, but they really want Jesus to bless them. They found him sitting under a tree with his disciples. Everyone wanted to see Jesus, big people and little children. They, they tried very hard to get close to Jesus. But the disciples stopped them from just touching Jesus. Jesus saw what was happening and he was not happy at all. He said, let the little children come to me because the kingdom of heaven belongs to the children. Everyone was happy. Now everyone I want you to sing with me. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loved the little children of the world. Jesus died for all the children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus died for all the children of the world. Jesus loved the little children. All the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loved the little children of the world. Now everyone, I want you to play with me. Dear God, thank, thank you for always having time for me. Amen. I greet you all in the mighty name of God. I greet you in the mighty name of God. My topic is, is this not a brand plugged out of fire by someone who comes from Zachariah 3 verse 2. 
Those who honor God and keep his commandments are the subject to the accusations of Satan. The enemy works with all his energy to lead people into sin. Satan then pleads on the account of their past sins, he should be allowed the free role of making such his subject. Satan stands before Christ, our high priest, day and night as an accuser of brethren. Cunningly, Satan presents every questionable future as sufficient for Christ to remove his protection power. With garments of sin and shame, the enemy's clothes those who have been overpowered by his temptations. Sinners appear before the enemy, who by his cunningly deceitful power has led them away from the allegiance to God. Satan then declares, it is not fair for Christ to be the defender and light. How often have you been accused by your own? You have been called all sorts of names which are not associated with you. Our advocate on high is saying, is this not a brand plugged out of fire? Do not look down upon yourself to the extent of thinking that you are a right off and not redeemable. Christ has already instructed his angels to remove filthy garments and clothe you with robes of righteousness. The Savior the Savior is waiting to enter your heart. Why don't you let him come in? May God bless you all. Thank you. Welcome, kids, to Uncle Matlele one more time. His series under the sun, south of the equator. But I'll still take you north of the equator one more time. Way, way, way back in time. During that historical time, during that very, very old, old medieval time. You know David, do you? Yes, you do. David, the one that killed Goliath through the Lord. That's the man I'm talking about today. But this time, he had run away. You can imagine, such a brave man running away. And he was in a cave somewhere there. And when they were in the cave, he said, oh that I yearn, oh, that I just, I just feel like having water from that well in Jerusalem, that water I'm used to. But you know what had happened? The Philistines were all over the place. They were all around the walls of Jerusalem. And at the end of the day, that's why people were now saying, well, what can we do? But there were three mighty men his bodyguards. One had killed 800 men in one battle. 800. That was a man and a half. Oh, <laughs> the other one I had actually sent away the whole Philistine army from a what? A field. People were just weeding in the field. And the Philistines came to take over. And he actually stood his ground and chased them away. And he killed most of them. Well, the other one had fought in a battle, battle such that his hand and sword were one thing. That's how he fought. So these were three mighty men. And David said, oh, I want to drink that water I'm used to in Jerusalem. That water is nice from Jacob's well. That water is sweeter than this water we're drinking here. And these men said to themselves, what? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? They said, yeah, I heard it. So what do we do? What do we do? They said, let's go get him. Just one jug. Grab a jug. Let's go get some water. So they sneaked out of the cave quietly, wanting to please their king. And you know, the funny thing is, they went past the army. You can imagine fighting their way into Jerusalem, past the Philistine army. They get to the well. They draw water. Now, the drama is, as they were coming back, <laughs> obviously one was holding the jar of water and a sword. They had to find their way back to the cave. It's funny, isn't it? If you can actually picture it, they risked their life. They risked 
because of just one jug of water from Jacob's well. But anyway, let's go on. They get to the cave. And so David, they say, David, king, long live. We brought you the water that you were yearning for. Here is the water. <laughs> I'm sure you are sure. You don't know what happened. Because what happened is funny. He did not drink the water. Oh, really? Actually, he said, you guys, I can't drink this water. This is your blood. You risked your life for just water. How can you do that? Wow. So it's better I pour the water away. What? Yes, you are very right. That was very funny. How can a king not honor such men who risked their life? Well, I got a lesson. One serious lesson. <laughs> Number one. Did David ask them to go and get water from Jerusalem? He was just speaking his mind. Oh, really? Yes, it was a favor. But how many times do we go up ahead and do things God did not say he wants us to do and we want just to please him? How many times do we do things that have nothing to do with godliness just to please others? At the end of the day, I learned another lesson. You may not be able to please mankind, but you can please God. How do you do that? Follow his ten commandments. I was speaking at another place of where there were students, grade two. They were grade two, grade three. And they were ready for their exams. They said, please pray for us. We want to pass. What, what? I said, yes, I'll pray for you. But first of all, are you reading? Well, I think we will just see whether we can pass by just checking for this topic. This topic is coming. Ah, this one might not come. I said to them, there is a syllabus. Do the whole syllabus. Stop thinking about what you think the marker is going to send. Because at the end of the day, the marker might decide to give you a question that you never read about. What am I saying? I am saying, God gave us ten commandments. Let's not choose what we decide to do about it. Let's do everything. Like the three men, they learned a lesson. You may risk your life, but at times it's not because you were sent to do that. Learn and learn fast. At the end of the day, our plea is, you kids, as you are growing up, find out what God wants out of you. That's the best thing. Just follow the instruction. May God bless you. I want to pray for you so that at the end of the day, you follow what God says, and not what you think he is saying. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you so much for the instructions. May we please follow them precisely and purposefully so that we do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the ancient times, Pharaoh, the Egyptian king, once questioned the existence of God. In this questioning, he said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? It did not take him long since nature proved the existence of God. When we start to question the existence of God, like what Pharaoh did, God has nature at his disposal to answer for him. The second plague that came over Egypt were frogs. They came jumping to Pharaoh's palace, ribbit, ribbit. In their language, ribbit, ribbit. They are good with Pharaoh that there is God in heaven. When we closely look at nature, no one will be left out with an excuse because these invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made so that we are without doubt that there is a creator. But today, many theories are at swords with the concept that God is the creator. I would like for you to turn our Bibles to the book of Romans 1, verse 20. I shall read in your hearing. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and God, so that they are without an excuse. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word.
Here in Romans 1 verse 20, Paul is giving us a general revelation in which God has revealed himself through his creation so that there is no legitimate reason for our blindness. Today the beast is going to teach us about the creator. I have chosen a kangaroo to prove and teach us about God's work and creatorship. Kangaroos are big Australian mammals that hoop on their back legs. When hooping, kangaroos use their tails to balance and help them to move. We have four species of kangaroo, the red antelope, eastern grey, western and grey kangaroo. Kangaroos are marsupials. Marsupials are animals whose babies are born before they are ready to survive outside. Baby kangaroos are called joyous. A kangaroo can control the birth of their children to be male or female. So amazing. This reminds me of the book of Job, chapter 12, verses 9. It reads, Who among these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? After a baby kangaroo is six months old, a kangaroo can give birth to another joy. As they will be sharing the same teat, you will find out that the same teat produces different milk for the newborn baby and the six months old. Wonder work of God. What a God we serve. A kangaroo cannot move backwards, forward ever, backwards never. We will glorify the Lord who had made the world and everything in it. Revelation 4 verse 11. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory, honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will all things, all things were created. God bless you. Bye.